Welcome back! Today's video, we're going over what we need to do to remove these stupid palm wheels and get our new fancy, shiny, high wind, Y axis linear rail kit from TBS Tron 3D installed today. And we'll be going over some input shaper results once this kit's installed to see what kind of speeds it's recommending before and after. But first, I'm Ed, and this is my Tech Talk. Let's start off with what supplies we're going to need for today's project. We'll need the Allen keys that came with the printer, an 8mm socket, a measuring tape or calipers, a container to hold the parts, some tape to mark the bolt holes for the linear rails, and some 3D printed spacers, which will be included in the description below. In the first part of this series, we already talked about cleaning and greasing up the carriage and the rails, so we won't dive deep into that in this video, but make sure they're all clean and greased up and ready to be installed before we continue. Now that we have all our parts and tools ready to go, let's get started. First, raise the gantry all the way up as we need it out of the way because we'll be removing the whole bed. Then disconnect any external connections like the power cord and ethernet cable if attached. Next, at the back of the printer, reach underneath and we want to disconnect the accelerometer. Keep in mind for the plus models, we will have to move it, but TBS Tron 3D includes a new bracket. Now we can start removing all six of the adjustment knobs from under the bed. I recommend getting a separate container to hold all of our parts that we will be reusing. Following that, we want to take the PEI sheet off and remove the two center mounting screws. Once the two bolts are removed carefully, and I mean carefully, remove the bed trying not to damage the cables or the heated bed itself. Also, take the standoffs and springs and put them into that same container we did with the knobs. Next, we want to remove the two bolts that hold the Y belt to the base plate and place them to the side for reinstallation later. Now around the back, we want to remove the four bolts that hold the back cover on and once the back cover is off, proceed to slide the base plate off the frame. Then, with the base plate removed, we can start removing all six of the palm wheels for good. And while we are here, for people that have the plus model, this is a good time to move that accelerometer we were talking about earlier with the bracket and the M3 by 8 bolts included in the kit. With that done, we can grab our new long brackets and start installing 14 T-nuts and 14 M4 by 8 bolts. Remember to not tighten the T-nuts too tight as we need to slide them into the base still. Next, we can slide the long brackets with the T-nuts into the base of the printer. And if you need to, don't be afraid to have to spin the bolts if they don't slide in right away. And now we need to grab our measuring device to align the long brackets. For the plus, the bracket must be 23 millimeters from the back of the printer. And the max, the bracket must be 25 millimeters from the back of the printer. I found it easier to measure, then tighten one bolt, double check that measurement, and if it's still correct, tighten a couple more, then check it again till it's fully tightened down. Now we can grab our tape to mark the holes we will be using for the linear rails. I like to get a piece of paper or a scrap print and place it over the printer's data plate so it doesn't get ruined. With all the holes marked, we can finally grab our new linear rails in a bag of M3x5 bolts and start lightly screwing them in with the marked holes. We'll be fully securing them once we get the base plate back on. In the process of ordering and shipping my kits, TBS Tron 
3D released a new bracket for the Y axis kits that eliminates the need for the brass standoffs or the silicone gaskets. So shout out to them for shipping out the brackets and just making that process that much easier. But if for some reason you still have the old kit or just getting around to installing it, you can either just use the 16 brass standoffs and the short bracket, or you can use a combination of one of the thin and two thick silicone gaskets and the short bracket. And a lot of people recommend the gasket way, but that's with the old brackets too. But keep that in mind. If you have the new rede redesigned brackets, then you don't even have to worry about that anymore. And if you have the new brackets, you simply just have to secure them with the 16 M3 by 12 millimeter bolts and you're done. Now grab the six silicone washers and place them over the holes on the short bracket we just installed. And then place the base plate over the washer. Next, grab the four 3D printed spacers I had mentioned earlier and place them in the four larger mounting holes that the old stupid eccentric nuts used to be in and secure the base plate with the six 5mm by 14mm bolts included in the kit. With the base plate secured, we can finally start tightening the linear rail down. Starting with one side, tighten one of the bolts and slowly move the base plate back and forth to ensure that the linear rails are still parallel and nothing starts to bind. And now we just have to repeat this process till all the bolts are fully tightened down. With the linear rails finally secured, we can reattach the Y axis belt using the same bolts we took off earlier. And around the back again, we can reattach the back cover using the same bolts we removed earlier as well. Now we want to place the two standoffs we removed before in the same spots and place the heated bed back over the base plate. I found it easier to use some allen keys and the two middle screws for the time being to help keep everything aligned while we start installing the springs, screws, and adjustment knobs back on. With all the adjustment screws back in place, we can reinstall the last two center bolts and place our build plate back on and plug everything else back in. And we're finished with the Y axis. But we aren't done just yet. We have some charts to look at. All right, it's a new day. And after looking over the charts and rerunning them to make sure I did everything right, I'm ready to share my results. First, let's look at the charts when we had the palm wheels installed. It was recommending two hump with a recommended acceleration of 2100. But you can see our peaks are massive and a lot of vibrations at the bottom here. Now, when we install the linear rails, we see a dramatic difference. We almost eliminate the second hump, but we did manage to deal with a lot of the vibrations or resonance that was happening before. And it's recommending EI Shaper with an acceleration of 2500 so an increase of 400. And I was actually able to eliminate that second hump by putting the printer on the floor. So maybe it's more so my wobbly table than the printer. But we aren't done yet. There's still one big factor we haven't talked about and that this kit makes bed leveling a hundred times easier. I went from a variance of 2.5 and this weird bump in the front I couldn't get rid of to almost having a nearly flat bed mesh with a variance of 1.3, or 0.13, sorry. And now after all that, I can definitely say the Y-axis linear rail kit is a must have. Not only for its more stability when printing, but also the ease of mind when it comes to leveling the bed now. Thanks for watching, hope you found this video useful. 
And another shout out to TBS Tron 3D for sending me the kits. You can find a link in the description below to get your own and more. But we'll catch you on the next one when we install the Z-axis rails.